Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Your Big Music Moment. I'm Chris Sharma, your host, and we come at you every weekday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Today, we've got an amazing show with the incomparable Karen Waldrop, so that's going to be great. Uh, but first, just want to mention uh, Acorns, our partner uh, for the week and uh, and a couple days next week, and a really cool company. We'll talk a little bit more about them, but just a shout out to our presenting sponsor, Acorns. And uh, kind of before we uh, talk anymore, let's go to Karen. Hey. How's it going? Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? Great. How about you? We're so excited to do this. Um, yes, me too. Should we, should we just get moving with some music? And then I think we'll probably have a lot to talk about after this. Well, that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, exactly. I love it. Well, it's nice to meet you. This is Karen Waldrop here. This is my very first time um, doing a live stream with big music and I really appreciate them and Acorns, our sponsor. And also, um, I wanna start with a song that's never been released and as any good songwriter would, we love the latest song. The last song that we just wrote is our favorite song always and that is the case here. Um, this one's called I Go By Jane Doe and we're about to record it. It goes like this. I just landed 10 miles they call me a wild card, but it's just all that I know. Stuck my way to first class through a party on that road. And told the flight attendant to bring us one more round to go. Cause everywhere I go, everybody knows I'm the life of the night. I'm turning up all on my own. Nobody needs to know my name. Nobody knows from where I came. to keep it low key just drinking an island song sipping this margarita and he just had to come along now we're dancing on the bar yeah something's going on i told him he could call me jane said it's nice to meet you john everywhere i go everybody knows i'm the life of the night i'm putting up all on my own nobody needs to know my Awesome. I, literally the hairs on my arm were standing up. That was great. And that's a brand new song. Wow. It is. Yeah. And whenever you guys wanted to have me on tonight, I was like, you know, I think it's cool to play new music because yeah, right absolutely. now with the internet, everybody's at home. Like, I just think it's fun to just do it. So I figured I'd kick it off with a brand new song. Great. And so just tell me a little bit about the song because it sounds really cool. I love the, the imagery of Jane Doe, the, uh, the anonymity. <laughs> Thanks. 
Um, so the idea behind Jane Doe came from um, a day that I was sitting here in my music room writing with a friend of mine named Brandon Darcy and um, we were writing with a friend of his named Dean and we were all together and we were actually on Zoom and it was Cinco de Mayo and I started the Zoom call as a joke with a huge Cinco de Mayo hat. And I was like, haha, trying to be funny because nobody likes to write on Zoom, but we're all doing it because of coronavirus. So that was like a little bit of inspiration because we were like, oh, it's Cinco de Mayo. It's, you know, Mexico, Mexico's right. holiday. And then we started talking about different ideas. And someone said um, that they had a song idea for a song called John Doe and about how she's like going and traveling. And she, you know, it's like John Doe, like no one needs to know his name. And I'm like, well, I'm actually going to Mexico on August the um, 8th to sing for my friend Janice Smith's um, vowel renewal. And so I'm headed down there anyway. And so I kind of already have this Cancun trip in my heart because I'm going in um, August. So we kind of pulled inspiration from the real trip. And then we pulled inspiration from the Cinco de Mayo day. And together we created Jane Doe because I told him, I was like, Jane Doe is cooler than John Doe because Wait. she's the one with the secret, you know? But she doesn't want him with a secret. She wants to be the one with the secret. Yeah. So we changed it to Jane Doe. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it's it's really great, a really catchy song. It's and so tell me, you know, one of the purposes we do this is to get to know artists, amazing artists like you, and I can't wait to hear more music, but where tell us about your journey up to this point. Like obviously writing figures in heavily to what you're up to. Um, I know you've got a presence, a lot of things, some great uh, merchandise uh, and, and all of that, but what 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 bit you about music? When did the bug hit, and and when did the passion start? Yeah, so I used to play music. Um, I'm originally from South Louisiana, a little town called Mandeville, right outside of New Orleans. And um, whenever I started to, whenever I was in college, um, I started to play a lot of live shows, and that would be like when I was like bit because the um, college that I went to was extremely supportive of live music. I went to the University of Southern Mississippi in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Yeah. So while I was in college, everybody there was just really into original music. It was really kind of a strange thing. Like, yeah, so like the community, the bar scene, the tailgating, like everybody was like really into like my songwriting. And that was, I think, the fuel that kind of got me started because it wasn't, I mean, we played cover music, yes, but like, while I was in college, I was like playing bars and playing original music. And I think that's kind of rare and to have a community support. Rare. Yeah. Like no one ever yeah. really asked me to play covers really ever. I mean, I do it for Walter Quincy a lot, but right. since the beginning I've been playing original music and, and I felt like, um, Hattiesburg, you know, that's kind of where it started. It started. And so when I was in Hattiesburg, I, um, was a junior senior, like that last two years. Yeah. And during that time I was like, gosh, you know, if I can, if I can play music like this and make make money and and do this and write songs and record songs like this could be something that I could do. And I was 21, so I picked up and moved my twin size bed and my acoustic guitar to Nashville, Tennessee, and <laughs> here I am. <laughs> nice. Well, obviously it's it's working really well. We're we're so excited that uh, that you embarked on that journey. Um, do you want to Thanks. play a couple more songs and then we'll? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Continue chatting. Um, yeah, and I thought I would play this one um, for you guys, for anybody who's out there. You know, I think that definitely, I don't think, uh, coronavirus is a very, very challenging time for everybody. And uh, this song is a song that I released at the end of 2019 with a friend of mine, uh, William Michael Morgan sang on it. And it was produced by Dave Brainerd. But I just really like this song because it was actually written by a really hard time I went through in 2018. Just a really personal, challenging year. And so I wrote this song and tonight it goes out to anybody who's watching, who's currently going through a really hard time. And it's literally dedicated to the person who's getting you through this. Um, because when this is all over, that's the person you're gonna look up and they're still gonna be there. And that's what Me Again's all about. So this one's called Me Again. No, I don't believe it. I don't believe in fairy tales Or that we should grow Old all by ourselves And I don't buy into politics For everything in black or white The wrong is always wrong Right is always right. You made me believe in me again. So I just had to hear your voice tonight. I just had to see your face. I had to hold you in my arms. Oh, and by the way, 
never bought in Sioux Prince Charming. Or met a knight on a white horse. Or ever knew the reason that I was breathing. me again um which is a really special song to me i remember when i first started playing that song live it was just like such an emotional thing i used to cry like every single time i played that one just because of the people that were there for me through um crazy crazy times so so yeah so and then this next one is a song that i that i did not write um it's a song that was really inspired by um louisiana you know i'm from south louisiana I love South Louisiana. I'm really proud of being from South Louisiana. I'm definitely just honored to even know how to cook jambalaya. My mom taught me how to cook jambalaya. Anyway, you could go to karenwaldrop.com and you can see my jambalaya recipe. It's on uh, karenwaldrop.com. Go check it out. But in the meantime, while you're waiting on the jambalaya recipe, this is a song that um, was originally recorded by, or was originally released by Hank Williams, a senior. And, um, I decided to start playing the song one night. I was at the Grand Ole Opry backstage and I just thought, man, when I play the Grand Ole Opry, I need a great classic country song. So I went home and learned this one and I've been practicing it because one of these days I'm going to play the Grand Ole Opry. Two, three, four. Goodbye, Joe. You gotta go. Me on my own. You gotta go. Pull the road down the bike. Hey, 
station, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right amazing. On, online, we're going to New Orleans. <laughs> I think yeah, I think that you know, given your given your background. Uh, you have a special remit to sing that song being from the that's world. it that's it yeah. that's like you've, you've got it it's, it's extra special when you do it that's awesome <laughs> that's um it. and playing the harp too i didn't think we'd have two instruments today that's well, fantastic. there you go i actually uh started to play steel guitar um at the beginning of 2020 yeah. and then it was tricky because we weren't touring it's kind of hard to play steel guitar when you don't have a band right so, <laughs> yeah so exactly. i've been picking up some different instruments and trying to add some different sounds but i really love to I'm really kind of draw it back to Louisiana anytime I can. Yeah, that's it's the whole rhythm and everything is so infectious and so unique from that part of the the country. In terms Absolutely. Of music. So I when agree. you so when you write, you primarily write on guitar, or are you are you are you collaborating on all kinds of instruments, or? Gosh, you know that's such a common question. People ask that all the time. They ask, want to know how? What is the um? What is yeah. the structure? What is the the program? What is the way? How how does it go? And I'll say it goes different every single song. So some songs you have a concept. So like, right. for example, Jane Doe, we had John Doe, someone had that. Um, and then you just write from there. A lot of times I'll have like a hook. I'm gonna just finish mm -hmm. writing one um, with a friend of mine who had this hook. So like she had like a chorus, but we didn't have the rest of it. Um, and then sometimes it'll just be a guitar thing will start it. Um, most of the time for me though, and I can't speak for all artists, but I think for me as a songwriter, usually it starts with something that has happened to me. So it'll be like, I'll be traveling and I'll get an idea or I'll be like on a train and I'll get an idea or I'll be flying somewhere and I'll, or I'll be going to Mexico or so, you know, so a lot of times it's like something that's either happened to me or someone I know. So during, I mean, during COVID and everything and everyone kind of, being sequestered, you're, you're not getting as much of that feeder experience in. There's not, not a lot of travel, you're not kind of leaving the house. So that must make it a, a different experience these days. Yes, and especially because we are doing a lot of co-writing on um, Zoom. And Nashville is definitely a, a co-writing town. Um, yeah. And I'm really thankful to live here because I feel like when you write only by yourself and you always write by yourself, I feel like I have like a Karen Waldrop thing that I kind of do. But when I bring someone else in and write with them, I'm open to their box of crayons as well. Right. So when they bring something that's like, wow, I would have never written like Bridge of Jane Doe, like never would have written that ever in my wildest dreams. Um, so that allows you to pull from their crayon box. They can pull from your crayon box and it really just gives you new sounds. Yeah. Right. That's great. Obviously, you know, what you're bringing to the table is unique and, we don't want that changing too much, but I hear you that that collaboration gives you new tools. And uh, do you, it do, does. You ever, do you ever play at the, at the, is it the Bluebird Cafe? Yes. Every time is an honor, just like the time before it. Every single time you play the Bluebird is like yeah. such an honor. And um, I've played the Bluebird, I think four times now, um, but I love playing it every single time. It's so quiet. It's so intimate. It's so special. Yeah. It's just Kind of a novelty. <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely. If you if you talk during a set, you're gonna get kicked out, which is awesome. Yes, it, it really you're going to get <laughs> respectful of musicians, which is, uh, which is fantastic. Um, Extremely. You know, and and what else? What what's going on? I know that uh, any upcoming releases, anything we should be aware about. I know you know there's a lot of stuff on your website, which is awesome, and I encourage everyone to go there. Uh, but anything you want to shout out? Yeah, it's just so interesting. Like coronavirus and being home and the internet has created this whole new way so for me it was like i found out on march 11th that we lost 17 live shows and that was like whoa we lost 17 live shows now we have no money coming in we, we our whole business model has changed we have to come up with a way to pivot into a new idea into a new thought so what i did was i really focused on my facebook supporter page for that first couple weeks um, giving them a lot of behind the scenes, giving them, um, we did a, a weekly pep rally. They were on zoom. Um, so I really focused on that for like the first couple of weeks. Um, we grew my Facebook supporter page, um, into what it is now, which is a lot more supporters. And then I moved into, it was so, it was so great. And I'm a shout out to all my supporters are amazing. Um, but then we moved into, um, kind of the next phase, which was, you know, how do we move forward from here? So how, what did we do? We are launching, we'll have a lot of stuff coming up, but a couple, just a little quick rundown. 
Um, we just launched a July the 16th BYOB, which means bring your own booze. And for me, bring my own band. And we're doing a live show with multiple camera angles. And it's going to feel like the people are actually at a live show. So like I can sit here all day and play music for people, but it's still going to be acoustic. So on the 16th, we're going to do a five piece band. People can buy virtual tickets. There's virtual VIPs available. There's actually 40 tickets that people can actually come to the show in Middle Tennessee with a mask and social distancing and the whole thing. Um, so there's that, and we're really excited about that. I just launched a brand new pre-order Waldrop Worldwide t-shirt, which is so cute. Um, and then we are also doing, on Thursday night, we're doing a cyber signing, which is definitely unique. Here's our new t-shirts, by the way. How cute are those? Waldrop. Awesome. Go check them out on the website. Waldrop Sweet. Worldwide. We just launched those today. Um, and then on Thursday, we're going to do a cyber signing where I sit right here one-on-one -on -one with the fans all across the world and personalize their product to Jim. You know, and I shout out where, he, where he's from. I usually will say like, hey, Jim's here from Utah. Right. Sign a CD. You know, so that's kind of a, that happens about twice a year. And we do that just to really connect with the fans that are global that maybe right. won't ever meet me. Um, in the meantime, I'm recording and mixing two songs. Um, you, I go by Jane Doe, which I just played for you, as well as um, a song that I recorded in Muscle Shoals um, nice. called, you, yeah, you just don't know it yet. And that definitely has a, a groovy Muscle Shoals keys kind of feel. Um, so yeah, so we're really, I mean, I'm just writing a lot and I've been playing a lot. I did a show this past weekend and then I got to sing at, um, for a lady on her deathbed during the coronavirus time, which she wasn't, it wasn't because of coronavirus, but it was just a, such an honor to get to go and sing for her. And now I'm going to be singing at her funeral here in a couple of weeks. So wow. it's definitely been, God has surprised me. It's been like, Oh, okay. I'll do that. Okay. God, like nice. whatever you want to do. And then meanwhile, I know it sounds like a lot, but it is a lot. We launched a, a new concept called home fest which allows our fans global or not globally, just domestically um, in the U S to book a home concert for them and 25 of their friends. So that way we can, we already have a couple books so we can just drive to Georgia and play in their backyard for 25 people wow. and it still be safe. So we're trying to create creative ways to continue to make music without putting me or the fans at risk. And as long as I'm doing both of those things, I'll pretty much try it. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's amazing. And it's right. And bring the creativity that goes into music into the dissemination of music. Yeah. So, yeah <laughs> okay. Like yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll feel you on uh, that. Well, that's amazing. Definitely. Uh, we're glad to uh, be part of it and help support. And that's, you know, what you mentioned, you know, with, uh, with our uh, musicians on call, which is the, the charity that we work with, they do a great job. If they bring musicians into, you know, hospitals or hospitals or wherever places they can be of service. In the Amazing. Way. And so that kind of, that definitely um, juxtaposes that you actually did that as well. So that's, that's pretty mm -hmm. um, So what- uh, You gotta do what you gotta we, do, I guess. Yeah, and you know what music is, it's, it's what I live my life for, so. Uh, it's an amazing thing. What um what do we have next? I know I think uh, the last song is a little bit poignant too, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yes. Um, this is a song that well, all my songs are a lot of my songs. I realized recently I did a Hello TV live stream a couple weeks ago, and I realized recently that like a lot of my songs really are inspired by travel, and I think it's because um it's such a huge part of what we do traveling. So, and honestly, I think there's like some sort of sick thing that God does when he makes a songwriter, he makes them a songwriter, but he also gives them this passion for travel. Um, so we are like obsessed with seeing the world and we are obsessed with writing songs all at the same time, which works well because it makes us want to keep going and traveling, which is an odd combination. But, um, so I've noticed recently, like how many songs and how much traveling has affected my writing. Um, and this one right here is a song that it was actually an idea that my uncle had. Um, my mom is one of 18 children. I know it's like crazy, but we're from Louisiana. So 18 kids. My mom is one of 18 children. Yes. You can rewind back and play it as many times as you want. 18 children. Um, so anyway, so with her being from such a large family, um, we're all over the United States, like literally everywhere. And so um, I was with my uncle one night. We were sitting there having beers. And he was like, Karen, you really should write a song about how families are like disper dispersed all over America. Now you have a family living in one girl's living in 
Chicago and the other, and her mom's living in California, you know? So, so that's happening a lot. And so I was, he said that and I said, oh my gosh, that is so true. And I'm 16 hours away from my family. So I, so I was like, yeah, I definitely want to write that. I think that's cool. And then I came up with this song idea when I was sitting by the pool one day. And, uh, and then I got together with a couple of my friends and, um, and we wrote this one. And, and I cried the whole way through. So did my co-writer, Megan Stewart, because she lives far from her family as well. But Rory Burke wasn't crying that much. He was just giving us great lyrics. Um, but anyway, uh, this one's called Kendall County Road. Goes out to anybody who was far away from their family. Well, my mama's in the kitchen like she always is Cooking up something for my sister's kids Sunday supper on the grill and the game on TV Well, the telephone rings, little old me And mama asks, how am I doing? I'm doing all right I'm doing just fine but they can't hear lonely through the phone No, they can't feel the heartache of being alone A thousand miles away here on my own Wishing San Antonio was home Sundays like this make me wish I was living on that Kendall County Road If I could catch a flight tonight, I'd be there by midnight. And back at work on Monday, right on time. Just sitting around the table eating mama's chicken. But instead, I'm here in Wichita just wishing that I was right there on the other side of this line. Cause they can't hear lonely through the phone No, they can't feel the heartache of being alone A thousand miles away here on my own Wishing San Antonio was home Sundays like this make me wish I was living on that Kendall County Road Leaving is easy, it's staying gone that's hard to do. And I still don't have a heart to tell them the truth. Cause they can't hear the through the phone. No, they can't feel the heartache. Wishing San Antonio was home. Oh, it's days like this that make me wish I was living on the Kendall County Road. Right there with them on that Kendall County Road. That was beautiful, Karen. That's really lovely. Nate, thank you so much for coming on. That yes, was, yeah, thank that was you. really beautiful. Thanks for uh thanks for coming on. I kind of started talking before you got the earbud in, but it was it was really an amazing, uh, amazing track. I love it. Um Thanks. I, I, I just of... love writing songs and I've just been writing so many new songs. It's been kind of a it's kind of kind of a trip during this. My dad made a joke and he said, Well, coronavirus has kind of been good to you because you've been writing so much. <laughs> You know where Which you, is, you, you, know. you take it where you can get it. I guess it's uh, you know yes. we're, for, we're fortunate to have those songs in our world. So that's amazing. Absolutely. Hey, speaking of my dad, he's a huge finance guy. He's all about financial wellness. And I wanted to mention too, if anybody's watching, there's this really great app that's up in the link. Click it, and if you download it or if you sign up for Acorn, you're going to get five dollars free in the financial wellness. So go click that, check that out. I'm going to do it. We're all going to get five dollars for free just to sign up. And, uh, and I, I remember to say that because my dad, he, I tell you what, 
the guy is just on it when it comes to personal finance. <laughs> he's like, if he's watching, Dad, you got it going it's, on. <laughs> it's, it's hugely important. It affects your whole life, right? You know, and it, and it allows you to do all kinds of things. And so awesome. And my grand, my grandfather used to always say, and he he's even more, you know, smart with money than anybody I've ever met. But he used to always say money, money doesn't buy happiness, but it makes hardships a lot easier. Right. And I love that. It's so true. It's like, it doesn't buy happiness. But you know, when you go through a hard time, it's like, okay, it's nice to just anyway. So yeah, I actually really have a lot of passion for personal finance too. So don't get me started. Don't I'm get me sure, started on yeah. that. Or and I'm sure it's something as an artist, you know, it's crucial to pay attention to in that whole, we, everyone's an entrepreneur now. So now absolutely, more than ever, it's, it's so important. So awesome. Absolutely. Well, thanks. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the shout out. Uh, and um, I just can't wait to have you back on. You're welcome. Absolutely. Anytime. And I thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you to Big Music. Thank you to Acorn. And a shout out to Waldrop Worldwide. Absolutely. Waldrop Worldwide. <laughs> All right. Okay. We'll Talk see y'all Thursday soon. night. See Take ya. Care. Wow, everybody. What an amazing show. She's an amazing songwriter and can also deliver the songs, you know, emotionally and technically. And uh, just uh, just what a what a fun treat to be able to to watch and listen to to Karen Waldrop. So it's amazing. Um, I've got a great show tomorrow uh, with uh, David Davis, and so that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, just like to shout out once again, Acorns, our sponsor, a really cool company. They look after your financial wellness, and they've got a, a great portal and a great app. So definitely sign up. You can sign up at on Karen's. Uh, Karen's social, or you can sign up uh, at Big Music or, or straight over there. But uh, we're really happy to be partnering with them this week and a little bit of next. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And just one last thing, uh, Big Music stands behind racial equity and Black Lives Matter. And you can check out our socials to know what we're doing as a company to, uh, to move Neil forward in a positive direction with concrete measures. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Talk soon and live to listen.